this one thing stops most investors from being successful. There's this one scary word, it's called emotions. Emotions are the one thing that stop most investors from ever being successful. And the thing is that the market works almost entirely on emotions. How do you know when to get into an investment? How do you know when to get out? Right? All of this is based on our emotions and how we feel. So when we approach investment opportunities, we have two things that we're working with. And so we have emotions and we have logic. If we approach our investment opportunities with an emotional approach, we're most likely going to fail in that investment. And that's just how it is. As investors, we need to understand how we can separate that emotion from our investment decisions. I have found all of my best investments came from a time when I was able to think through that process logically, create a step-by-step -step solution on when I enter the investment, how I'm gonna know whether my investment was successful, and what is my exit criteria. The thing is that most investors just think about the first part. They're like, hey, let me just hop into this investment. Hopefully it works out, right? Sounds fun, sounds great, that's not how it works. We wanna make sure that we also have a process in place. How do we manage our investment? How do we monitor on our investment? Is our investment on track? And then when do we exit the investment? I would say that the exit is more important than the entry of the investment. And the reason is that a lot of times we leave a ton of profit on the table or we lose all of our profit because we exited at the wrong time due to emotions. So this is typically how an investment process works. We might be level-headed, we might be cool, we think we're good, we start investing into, let's say, Bitcoin, right? Super easy example, super current, right? We invest into Bitcoin at 40,000, right? The value is $40,000, we're cool, we ride it up to 68,000, 69,000, whatever it got up to, right? We got up to that peak, we rode it up to the very, very tippy top, and we're like, man, like, we're good investors, man, we're good, right? I know exactly what I'm doing. I could have called this in my sleep, right? And then it dips down aggressively and we're like, uh oh, like, well, we're still in profit, we're fine, it's hovering around 50, 45, we're still good, we're, we're chilling. And then the investment goes back up again and we're like, okay, well, did it meet my exit criteria? Should I be exiting this investment? No, it's likely that we didn't have a plan and we're just like, hey, when Bitcoin hits a million, we'll exit, right? Well, we think we're gonna exit, but are we actually gonna pull the trigger then or are we gonna keep holding, right? So you have to have an exit plan. And now at this point where Bitcoin is today, it's about 29,000. We're all the way down to 29,000. So investors who invested at 40,000 before our, our all-time highs, right? They invested at $40,000, they rode it all the way up to the all-time highs, they rode it back down with that little reversal, and they rode it back up again, and they came all the way back down to 29,000. And so, did they make any money? Well, they did at a certain point, but because they never capitalized on that, because they never had a set goal in mind, they were not able to realize any of those gains, and now they're at a loss. And so what happens with, with this investment now? These people, they rode this roller coaster of emotions. They were ecstatic because they were doing so well at the beginning. And then they got a little nervous and then they're like, no, I was right. I knew I was right. This is gonna keep going up. It's gonna keep pushing. And it just kept going up and up and up. And then all of a sudden it just reversed. And then we've had a few very bearish pushes down. The market went down very aggressively and now we're below where we started. So if we invested $100,000, we're down from $40,000 to $30,000 per Bitcoin. So we're down a, a decent amount. With a situation like this, what is our exit strategy if we continue to lose? The exit strategy can be determined before you ever enter the investment. Prioritize the exit strategy above the starting point because it allows you to determine how much risk you're gonna to allocate to this one investment. So if $100,000 is all that you have and you realize that your negative exit point is right here and your positive exit point is right here, how much can we possibly lose before it's going to be too dangerous to keep holding? We need to realize where our threshold, our comfortability with risk, where that is. We need to know how comfortable we are with that risk and comfortable with taking that loss. If we're uncomfortable taking that loss, then we're over leveraged. However, in order to keep a level head, in order to stay confident in what we're doing, we can't risk so much 
that we could potentially lose a very large portion of our portfolio. We want to make sure that it's always a very small percentage of our portfolio because that protects us as the investor and allows us to be strategic in what we allocate our funds to. This brings me to my second point, investment allocation. There are so many different things that you could possibly invest in and you need to analyze what your exit point is for each one because that then dictates your risk management strategy and your risk management strategy dictates your allocation. What percentage do I have allocated to Bitcoin? If I personally believe that Bitcoin is the number one investment in the world and it's the best possible thing you could invest in, I'm saying theoretically, right? Then I'm probably going to allocate a good amount of my portfolio unless... I realized, hey, this is a this is still a risky investment. This is cryptocurrency and we're already at 40K. Maybe I shouldn't invest all my capital. Maybe I shouldn't invest 50%. Maybe I shouldn't invest 30%. But maybe I'm okay putting 10 or 20% into this investment because in the worst case scenario, if I lose 10 or 20% of my portfolio, I'm still fine with it. Now, do I think Bitcoin is a good investment? I am personally invested in it and I'm holding right? So I think that there's a lot of potential in the crypto space, but specifically with big coins that are not likely to disappear overnight. We recently had this situation with Luna, with Tether, right? Nobody thought that a a pegged token or a pegged coin would just go down to zero, right? Or go down so significantly. We don't want to have our money sitting in assets like that, that could potentially put our entire portfolio at risk. What if your entire portfolio was held in Luna and USDT? It's a pretty bad situation to be in, right? We wanna make sure that we're allocating our capital to strategic assets in classes that are proven to perform. I personally would not put all my money into crypto because I don't think that it has enough of a track record to continue performing like it has. It's done really, really well, especially in the last couple of years. However, I would rather have the majority of my portfolio in something safe, maybe like real estate or physical assets, assets that are not replaceable, right? Because those things are going to be what fuels me and keeps me going in times like this where maybe I'm down on my cryptocurrency investments. I need to have something that's not correlated with the performance of cryptocurrency. So we have that decorrelation, so to speak, of our different asset classes of what we're allocating our investments into. Because if we're all in on cryptocurrency, well, the likelihood of all of them being down at the same time is pretty high. They're kind of correlated, right? But if we have maybe just 20% in Bitcoin, 10% of our portfolio in other cryptocurrencies, and then the rest of our portfolios may be exotic cars and luxury watches and real estate and multifamily units. And we also are part owner of a hotel and part owner of a jet. And we have a yacht that we charter out and we're also mining Bitcoin and we have e-commerce stores and we have all these different things that we're investing into. That allocation, that little basket that we've created for ourselves called our portfolio allows us to weather times in the market when it's just not doing so well. And I think that's one of the biggest things that allows us to be long term investors. You want to be the last man standing in the market. I've said it time and time again, you want to be the last man standing in the market. When everybody else has lost, you want to still be invested. You either need to have a massive pool of capital that you're working with and risk very little of it, or you need to be diversified so well that even if certain sectors of your investment portfolio aren't performing, you're still making money. You're still maintaining that passive income cash flow week after week after week. And you're able to cover your expenses. You're able to cover your family's expenses. You're able to maintain that level of life that you've created for yourself, even if a certain cryptocurrency crashed to zero, right? So we can take a huge learning lesson out of this and out of what's going on in the cryptocurrency market and realizing that, yes, there's a lot of money to be made. But usually when there's a lot of money to be made, there's also a lot of risk that we're taking on. And I know many people who were super, super leveraged going into it, going into these cryptocurrency plays and borrowing them against each other and then reinvesting and stacking on top of that. And that's cool. And they made a lot of money doing it. But when you have a situation like this, it's just not good for anybody that's in that game. If you're managing your risk correctly, if you're allocating your investments correctly across your entire portfolio, if you're in non-correlated sectors, 
things that don't affect each other when they move up or down, right? When we remove that correlation, we remove our emotions from making our decisions, and we simply use logic to place investments and allocate capital into our portfolio, right? So we're not getting super hyped up about Bitcoin. Hey, it's so cool. I love it. You know, we're making logical decisions. Yes, this might be the best investment on earth, but logically speaking, I shouldn't allocate more than 10% or 20% because that's the maximum that I'm comfortable losing. If I lose 30%, I'm going to cry a little bit. So I'd rather only keep it to 20%, right? So every investor has their own process that they need to go through and you need to understand what would the worst possible case scenario do to you and do to your portfolio? Is it going to hurt you immensely or is it just gonna sting a little bit but we can move on? You always wanna maintain longevity in the market. Thank you guys for joining me so much. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all on next week's video.